God be with you, lad. What can I do for you? Sir, can I ask you about something? Of course, Henry. Well, I thought since we chased the bandits out of Privislavitz, the roads would be safer. Ah, criticizing your liege lord, are you? And what, in your opinion, should he do about it? Oh, no, I don't mean anything by it. Just that it surprises me. <laughs> Easy, lad. I'm only pulling your leg. You're quite right. The roads really aren't safe. Mostly due to one thing. My garrison is a shamble these days. I lost most of my men in Skalitz, and what I'm left with after Pribislavitz is hardly enough even to guard Pigstein. Let alone guarding the roads and patrolling the rest of the province. I simply don't have the men. Uh-huh. I understand. That is, I didn't have the men. As it happens, you've come at just the right time. Recently, I asked an old acquaintance for help. Sir Kuno of Rickwald and his mercenary band. The men who ride with him are a rough lot, mostly former convicts, but they're as capable as any squad of soldiers. Well, excuse me for being so bold, but there's plenty of mercenaries around. Surely you can find a more... respectable band? You have a point, lad, but I'd like to tell you I talked to Kuno because I trust him. But actually, my reasons are of a more pragmatic nature. You see, Kuno owes me a favour, so he'll serve me free of charge. So, you want me to join them? Yes, but that's not all. I told Kuno I'd send him a guide. But really what I need is for someone to keep a close eye on him and his men. Someone reliable. And I'd say you fit the part. Go and report to him at his encampment. You'll ride with his band on patrols and make sure they don't get too... disorderly. Who is this Sir Kuno of Rickwald? He's the last baron of the House of Rickwald, which became impoverished. So he took to the mercenary trade, like many poor noblemen do. Unless they become robbers. Which often isn't all that different. He's certainly an entertaining companion, but as a mercenary? Well... Let's just say he has his own particular approach to certain matters. Well, sounds a little worrying. Oh, it's nothing too bad. Just that now and again he needs reminding not to step over the line. How is he indebted to you? I did him quite a big service, actually. I saved him from the hangman. Oh, that sounds like quite a story. How did it happen? You should ask him. You'll be spending quite a while riding together, so it'll help pass the time. But one thing I can tell you, he seems to have taken inspiration from me. A lot of his men had their own encounters with the Executioner, too. All right. I'll go and report to him. Excellent. He set up camp between Ratai and Ledechko. It's a good base for covering the province. Good luck, Henry. And watch out for yourself. I will, sir. Thanks. Good luck, then. Yeah!
God be with you. Uh, I'm looking for a Sukuno. Sukuno. Uh, Baron Rickvold. Isn't this his camp? You won't get nothing out of him. You must be Radzig's man. I heard he was supposed to send someone. Yes, Sir Radzig sent me as a guide. I'm Henry. I'm Jakey. And this here fella, we call the Stone. I can see why. What's up with him? Cat got his tongue? No. More like the dog got it. The executioner's dog. When the executioner ripped it out of him. Anyway, you better come along with me. I'll introduce you to the other fellas. And the chief. These here are the Bearman brothers, Petter and Jan. They're a barrel of laughs, except when they're too drunk to string two words together. Like now. Don't get on the wrong side of them, though. When their blood is up, well, it ain't a pretty sight. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Never mind the fancy poses, Stefan. You're trying to kill the fucker, not teach him how to dance. And you, Dangler, stand your ground. Don't let him lead you round by the nose. Sir? Well, sir, this is Henry. From Co... From Lord Kobler. Ah, oh, it's about time Rads had got round to this. We need someone who knows their way round these parts. Leave off with the uh, bowing and curtsying. We don't hold with that tomfoolery here. Jakey! Where the hell are you sneaking off to? Go to the farm and get water. The lads are thirsty. But I went last time. And you'll go next time, you ungrateful pup. Get your ass moving. Snot-nosed brat. You pull them out of a pile of shit, and they thank you with back talk. Where were we? Oh, yeah. We need a guide who knows these parts. So I hope I can rely on you, Herman. That's Henry. Right. Well, as I said to Radzig, I don't want to carry any dead weight. We could find ourselves in some very tight situations where every sword counts. Oh. I know how to handle a sword, all right? I've heard a lot of fellas say that. They still ended up on the wrong end of one. <laughs> we'll find out. Stefan, take a break. Dangler. Let's find out what Harold here can do. Sure. No problem, Chief. Badly at all, I must say. You can ride with us. 
All right. Good. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. You don't know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> Sir Kuno, can you tell me something about yourself? Drop the sir. That title brought me nothing but grief. But what do you want to know? Sir Radzig told me the Rickvold family um, lost its wealth. How did that happen? There's all sorts of ways to become impoverished. Nothing easier. Especially when your father's a fool. And your mother's mad as a bat. Oh. But it's a long and twisted story. We took our name from Rickvald Castle. But that actually belonged to the convent of the poor Clares in Tynitz. And my father only leased it. You see, he knew the abbess there since they were young. Knew her very well. There was even talk that she only joined the order because her family wouldn't let her marry him. Anyway, whether he was fucking her right there in the convent or he just took a lot of interest in scripture, he spent an awful lot of time in Tynitz. Oh, he might have been after a bit of both. Sinning and confessing all in one place. Well, I can see the convenience of it. Anyway, my mother never had strong nerves. Truth be told... Her sanity was always shaky. Pa's escapades drove her cuckoo entirely. Then, one frosty December morning, I was woken by screaming and smoke. I looked out the window. I saw my mother there, in the courtyard, wreathed in flames. Behind her, the stables, the farm buildings and the tower were burning too. And she just stood there, shrieking with laughter. Christ! That sounds like a scene straight out of hell. Hellish it was, I can tell you. Me and my sister Adela and a few servants managed to get out before the whole place went up. I couldn't get to my father. Or my little brother. Poor lad was only seven. My sister and I were left destitute after the fire. But then my cousin, Adam of Drevich, took us into his castle. A few weeks later... He offered to buy what was left of our estates and sell me a small fortress near a Kovnik. It was a great relief. We suddenly had some hope of a future again. So I told my sister about it. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. A week later, the two of them announced to me they were getting married. And all that was left of our estates, lands, woods, villages, Adela was to get it all as a dowry. But surely that was for you to decide. You were the head of the family, right? Aye. Only I barely had 17 years under my belt, and I'd just lost everything. Of course, I argued with them. And that was the only excuse they needed to kick me out of Drevich too. <sighs> That's pretty harsh. You're telling me. But I'm not complaining. As my pa always used to say, if you can turn your hand to something, you'll never be lost. I doubt it ever crossed his mind how often I'd remember those words. What about your debt to Sir Radzik? How did that come about? A twist of fate, lad. I was fighting in the hostilities between the house of Schallenberg and the town of Colleen. Some trade dispute it was, and I fought under the Schallenberg colours. In the end, the two sides negotiated a truce, and I rode to Colleen with a delegation that was to parlay there. We stopped off at an inn on the way. And it was there that I met Radzig Kobila. I could tell at first sight he was a man after my own heart. A likeable rogue with a sharp mind and a merry soul. We spent the whole night drinking together and talking. And in the morning, we set off together with sore heads, but in good temper, since he was travelling the Colleen same as I was. Only, once we reached the city gates, they arrested me on the spot. <laughs> Seems the burghers had it in for me since I'd been making their lives hell for a good six months. On the other hand, I was a member of the peace delegation, so by rights, they shouldn't have even looked at me sideways. And then it hit me why Radzig was there. Colleen is a royal city, so he was there to represent the king's interests. I see. So he was on the other side. That's right. Anyway, they threw me in a dungeon, and a few days later, word reached me that the Schallenbergs had reached an agreement with the burghers. Only part of the deal was they would give them my head. And I'd surely have ended my day swinging from the town battlements if it hadn't been for Radzig. 
He liked me, and he could see it was a dirty trick. So he somehow squared things with the city council. Lucky for you. Indeed. I owe my life to Radzik, and I'll never forget it. He's asked me twice before for help. This is the third time, and how could I refuse him? I'd like to ask about your men. Ask away. What about the fellow they call Dangler? I've never ridden with a better man, I can tell you. He doesn't say a lot, but for that he listens all the better. Nothing escapes him. So he scouts for you? Not just that. It's happened more than once. I was closing a deal with someone, and Dangler told me after that he didn't like the smell of the fellow. Nearly every time he was right, and the fellow tried to stab me in the back afterwards. Shall we ride out? No point in going out now. We'll soon be dark. Come back at first light and we'll get going. All right. You can sleep here in the camp if you want. There's room enough. And you ought to get better acquainted with the fellas. Care to try your hand at dice? <laughs> May the best man win. That's it. We'll see. Hmm. No point in pushing it. This will be the one. Should I? Shouldn't I? No, I didn't. Oh, no!
<laughs> Mine! Fancy throw. Your fame precedes you, but you won't get the better of me. If I was in your shoes, I'd pass while the going is good. Come on, it's time I have a throw. This'll be the one. God's holy hat! We'll see. That's it. Your turn. Not afraid of anything, eh? This'll be the one. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have pushed it. Use your head, man. You'd lose everything. Hardly worth talking about. They're rolling well, this game.
my chief. Kuttenberg and Bud. Should we ride out? Oh, you'd like to ride out, would you? Wouldn't you rather leave us sitting here on our asses, waiting for you a few more days? Sorry, I had a job to take care of. A job? I believe Radzig assigned you to us. So this is your fucking job! Sir Radzig. You can call him what you like, Henry. Just remember you're riding with us. I'd like to head to the north. Is there anything interesting that way? North of here, uh, Samapesh and Merhoyed are that way, and Talmberg is a bit further on. There's stables in Merhoyed. I wouldn't mind paying a visit to those stables. We can go through there. And from there? From there, we'll follow our noses. Something interesting is sure to turn up. Feel it in my bones. Man up and let's go! Sure. Chief. Fine day, eh, hey, brother? Indeed, brother. You know what I like best about days like this, yeah? Hmm. The scent of chamomile wafting from the hillsides. Among other things. Ah, like the rounded hills, rising, purpling, all soft and pink in the sunlight. And the fertile valley below, spreading wide and inviting. Dew glistening in a mossy hollow. The sweet aroma honey in the air. The sturdy poplar, standing tall and erect. Aye, it reminds me of that day. That day, where the two of us fucked Fletcher's ma. <laughs> Very droll. You'd make a stuffed bird laugh. Your ma's a stuffed bird. <laughs> I stuffed her myself. <laughs> I can't smell any chamomile. Well, men, how are things? May I? Yes, Fletch. How shall I put it? I'm a little concerned about the prospects in these parts, Chief. Oh? How's that? I've been looking around, and if you'll pardon me, it seems to me that we've been stuck for a long time in the arsehole of beyond. It's not Paris, France. I'll grant you. What I mean to say is, I haven't got any new kit or arrows since the day Jakey joined me. It makes me uneasy, Chief. I see. What about the rest of you? I don't know what Fletch is moaning about. There's plenty of booze and loose wenches nearby. Not to mention fools in the taverns who don't know when to stop rolling those dice. Dangler? It's the arsehole of beyond everywhere we go. It always makes me uneasy. Jakey? Fletch can complain. I was supposed to get a suit of armor, and all I got was a shitty kettle hat. Sorry. But they don't do hoberks in girl sizes. Oh? Well, how did you get yours, then? All right. I appreciate your honesty, lads. Don't worry. There will be plunder. We're here to fight. And to the victor, the spoils. That's how it's always been. But no purse of silver will shed blood for you on the battlefield. That's what this company is for. And I hope you never forget the golden rule. You can joke all you want. Moan all you want. But nothing will keep your skins in one piece better than trusting your leader, who you choose by your own free will. So don't ever forget that. Amen. Let's go. Behind me and keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think we can expect? 
take this time, fellas. Groschen, hidden in a piss pot under the bed. A nice chunk of beef. Yeah. No one there will be eating. On account of it, it just fall yeah. out through the holes in their bellies, eh, hey, brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My mouth is already watering, brother. And I ain't even yeah. touched a purse yet. Once you've got your hands on some loot, I'll be happy to play you for your hard-earned groschen back at the camp. Poor old Fletch. Never gets to see the action from close yeah. up. What about you, Dangler? What do you expect to find? Futility and human suffering, like always. Always full of good cheer, eh, Dangler? Why don't you take a leaf out of Stone's book and shut the fuck up? Jesus, I wish you'd all shut the fuck up. Keep your eyes peeled, though. There might be someone hiding out here still. Look for clues and question the survivors, if there are any. Jesus Christ, what a massacre. They weren't even armed. <sighs> Looks like it happened fast. God almighty. Well, they can't be all that clever or they'd have taken the wagon. No signs of resistance. They simply slaughtered them like animals. Kuno will want to know about this. I found this shield in a shed along with a letter. Seems like someone left us a message. Show me that. Hmm. I know that, Crest. It's the house of Zul. A dangerous lot, God's truth. I don't think we'll find anything else here. We'll stay here a while, just in case. And you should go and report to Radzig what happened. What do you know about these Zuls? A family of impoverished nobles. They fought in the Margraviate Wars in Moravia. But what they're after in Bohemia, I've no idea. I thought I could go and search for those raiders. They might not have gotten very far yet. All right. It's always good to have an extra pair of eyes. We'll keep searching here for a while and then head back to the camp. Did you find any tracks? Some, a horse or two. They rode off through the meadow towards dawn. They were avoiding the road, which is interesting. Towards dawn? Meaning towards the east. Apart from the mounted ones, there were some men on foot too. Well weighed down. Well, they can't move too fast then. No. And what's more, they left a trail of blood. One or more of them might be wounded. Either that, or they dragged off some poor bastard from here. Nice work. Thanks. <laughs> Poor creature. Hunted down like game.
this way. Seems they met some resistance at the farm. Oh, what a waste. But at least I know which way they went. I tracked down those raiders. You did? Well, nice work. So where are they? A short way to the east, in a glade in the woods. They're dividing up their loot. How many of them are there? About seven. Hmm. We'll see. I'll tell the lads we're gonna deal with them. Nice and quiet. Hey! To me! Now! Listen up! Henry tracked down those bastards who raided the farm. They're dividing up their loot not far from here. So let's pounce on them and give them what for. Move out! That's a good one. I haven't heard that one since. Let me see. At a loss for words, are you? <laughs> Stop it, please. Or I'll split my sides laughing. I'd feel sorry for the stone. Imagine not being able to insult your enemy's mother. Ah, big mouth Jakey makes up for it. I don't know how you managed without me for so long. Who was it needed their back covered last time? Jakey. JT. Fuck you. I don't need minding. We all cover each other's backs. That's how this band works. Get used to it. I've no intention of getting myself killed by a bunch of bandits who pillaged a farm for cabbage. Well, I don't know. You might get mistaken for a cabbage yourself. Aye, he's green enough. <laughs> I'll cover you, Jakey. Got it? Thanks a lot, Fletch.
thought you was too restless after, hey? <laughs> I'd say low graph. Nobody asked you. What do you think, brother? I don't know. It ain't that important. Right. We'll have a look around here for, uh, uh clues. Meanwhile, Henry, you go and report to Rad. Right out of his hand. And let him have your blade right into the side. A greenhorn's mistake. I keep thinking about that grass, though. You know what I like best in a skirmish, young? Pray tell, brother. When there's one last fucker left. We surround him. Hack him from all sides. Until he falls in a bloody heap on the ground. I love that. <laughs> we ought to wager on who delivers the fatal blow. A new wager? Fletch will be up for that. We gotta do something to spice things up. To make it more like a proper war. Maybe if we timed our attacks better. It'll look more like a battle plan, eh? But when your blood's up... Aye, plans go to hell in the heat of battle. Everyone's still going to lay into that last fucker with everything they got anyway. Aye, even if we have to chase him all the way to Olomots to do it. All right, next time we'll see who delivers the coup de grace. Jakey can keep an eye on it while he's hiding in the bushes, shitting his braids as usual. The only place I'll be shitting is in your tent. I like that faint strike from the left, brother. <laughs> The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? Sir, I'm afraid I have some bad news. We came across a burnt-out farm near Merhoyed. Christ! It seems Pribislavitz wasn't the end of it. And this is something else, sir. We found a shield there with a crest. A tricolor star on a blue field. I know that coat of arms, unfortunately. It's the House of Zul. There was a letter there, too. Show it to me. Although I think I already know what it will say. Here you are, sir. And scruple as beast. Mm -hmm. Cruelty and malevolence. Uh -huh. I challenge you to face me in a duel. Defend your honor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anonymous wretch. Well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Signed, Hagen Zul. As I expected, old grievances coming back to haunt me.
What happened between you and Sir Hagen? That's a long story. Well, if I'm to know what I'm up against, I'll need to hear at least the gist of it. True. All right, in a nutshell. Several years ago, I had to resolve a bloody feud between the Zools and another family. The Zools were clearly in the wrong, but refused to accept my ruling. So, I hanged the head of the family, raised their castle to the ground, and confiscated their property. Ever since then, they've had it in for me, not surprisingly. But you acted in good conscience. Yes, although in retrospect it might seem excessively harsh. And it doesn't help that the other family is related to mine. This Sir Hagen wants to challenge you to a duel. Apparently he still hopes I will agree to this kind of outmoded solution to disputes. But surely you can't refuse a challenge to a duel. What about your honour? Henry, my boy, honour is a splendid thing, and it should be held in high regard. But in time, you'll learn that some matters are not so straightforward. Like this one? Yes, like this one. The only reason Hagen is challenging me now is that he has a marked advantage. I've served as the royal hetman for the last 15 years and become a courtier. Hagen, meanwhile, was fighting in the Margraviate Wars in Moravia and elsewhere as a mercenary. Which of us do you think would win a duel? That's not honour, but an abuse of honour. Commonplace opportunism. I don't blame him for trying, but I'm not such a fool as to play by his rules. Well, what are we going to do about this? You and Kuno's band will just have to deal with Hagen and prevent further mayhem. The longer he's marauding around these parts, the greater the chances that I'll finally have to succumb to his conditions. So you'd fight him, if it came to that? Let's hope it doesn't come to that. But maybe there's something else behind this challenge. Maybe it's coin he's after. Who knows? All right. We'll deal with him, sir. I'm sure you will, Henry. Goodbye.